This game dev technique is used in almost every game. And once you know it, you'll start seeing it everywhere. I first came across it when developing a bot battling game, where I wanted the bots to sustain realistic damage such as dents, warping and crumpling after being hit. I achieved this using mesh deformation, which involves taking a mesh like this cube and moving its vertices, which are these points in space that define the mesh's shape. Moving, rotating and scaling objects aren't mesh deformation because they're affecting the object but not manipulating the mesh's vertices. Vehicle destruction is probably the most obvious use of mesh deformation. If you've played GT or other racing games, it's quite apparent. What's wrong with her now? But what I didn't realise was that this is the tip of the iceberg for mesh deformation and you will be amazed how far the rabbit hole goes. Whenever you notice twisting, warping or distortion on an object, you can be sure mesh deformation is to blame. And trust me, it's used everywhere. Those arrows I showed at the start weren't just arbitrary clickbait arrows. Batman's cape is a mesh being deformed to simulate a material affected by gravity, wind and Batman's movements. The sea is a plane being deformed to simulate waves. Destructible environments are just meshes being deformed. Even in this no Man's Sky clip, the entire terrain, including the ground and mountains, is procedurally generated, which means it's a plane that was deformed with an algorithm. Rattling off a few more uses of mesh deformation, there's character animations, facial animations, flags, deep snow and mud, distortion effects, and soft body physics. Check out the latest devlog on my bot battling game here, and let me know your favourite use of mesh deformation that you've noticed in a game.